I'm going to show you some paper from Thailand. This right here is natural unru. You can kind of see in the light there how it, how thin it is. You can see my fingers in between or behind it. This is also unru, and this is actually double unru. This is two sheets of unru put together, but you see how how you can see right through it. It's very, very thin. If you put this on gray book board, it actually kind of grays it down a little bit. It's not as bright of a white. If you get just one sheet of tissue paper like Unru, it's going to be like tissue paper. It's super, super thin. But this is double-sided. This is a cream and a white. This is a green and a blue, and a red and a black. This one has been my favorite one to use, and it's a double-sided with the copper and the natural. This is Unru as well, and it's a natural Unru, kind of a traditionally made one. It has more pulp to it. It's not as thin. And like this, this is actually machine-made. It looks natural. This is actually machine-made. This is paper from Thailand too, and it has, if you can kind of see that, it has leaves in it. This one actually right here has banana bark in it. This one does too. You can kind of show that. These have banana bark in them. So they have lots of different of different inclusions in them. And they're pretty thin. If you're working with these, you'll definitely want to use a very thin paste, um, preferably something like wheat paste instead of something heavy like PVA um, because they will tear easily, especially when they get wet. This is uh, traditionally made Unru, and it's thicker and has more variation to it and more texture. There's a lot more texture. This is actually thin. It has a lot of texture to it, but it's thin and it's been crumpled in, in the process of making it to give it more of a texture. Um, this actually has a lot of pulp and stuff into it and a lot of threads. You can actually see the threads in there. And this right here is soft Unru. You can just see it. Look at that. It is just fabric-like. It's soft. And it's really light. I can pull it back out. Now to work with this, it is actually kind of strong when it's dry. You can see I'm pulling it. It's pretty strong paper. It's not like tissue paper, but it's that thin. It's stronger. Um, however, when you get it wet, it's going to be... Uh, very easy to tear and so again you'll want to use something very thin like wheat paste when you're working with it and often if I'm if I'm using this I'll actually um, put the paste sometimes just on the board itself instead of onto the paper that way my brush when I go across it it's not pulling on the paper um, because it tends to kind of the fibers will come up from it and stuff when you're pushing the brush blue brush across it so I often will actually put the the paste on the board itself and then push this down on top of it and smooth it out. And if you need something flexible to go around things or to kind of mold across something very three-dimensional, this works really well. It comes in lots of different colors. You can kind of see the black is a little bit, it's like a muted black. It's almost like a charcoal, dark charcoal. And then the brown, which looks a little bit darker when you're buying it online in the pictures, it's a very uh, milk chocolate color. Definitely not dark chocolate. This is also paper from Thailand, and it's called inclusion paper. It's inclusions because it has a different petals or natural things in it. This is just a fern. When you're using this paper, uh, it comes with this natural decal on the edge, and a lot of people ask um, ask me how to get that natural decal to stay onto their paper and their boards when they're using it in their in their work. You can cut it. Um, but to just give you an idea, these threads are very hard to work with. You can't just tear them. You actually have to snip those. So if you're working with it, you'll have to, you could just tear along here, but every time you come to one of those threads, you've got to make sure you snip it. So this is some, some rose petals and, and these, these are just leaves and the ferns. Here's to give you an idea what it looks like on a book. This is this paper. It's on a book. And it's a little bit fragile in some cases where this will probably get worn down over time and 
and peel away and stuff. Most of these will just stay underneath and will they'll be okay. And so you can see right there, that one peeled away and across. So it is a little bit fragile just where it's showing through the pulp. This book right here has this fern paper on the inside of it. So you can kind of see what it looks like on the inside of a book. It's really, really pretty. And I usually recommend using something like this on the inside of books because putting this on the outside will do what it did to the other one where it just kind of pills up and away. But it keeping on the inside of the book really protects those ferns from coming up. And I think the fern one has been the most fragile one that I've come across, but it is really pretty. So you can kind of see that and the big thread that goes through them. It's really, really fragile. You can see right there. See how it kind of pulls up and up away from there? You can paste it down with wheat paste, or you can even seal it with something right across it, but it's really pretty and fragile. Really pretty and fragile. The end. <laughs>